What's up guys, it's Joe Sullivan from Strike the Sullivan Way coming at you with a crazy hair. Um, yeah, I had a couple minutes at work, so I just wanted to make this uh, quick video. It's basically gonna boil down to a rant because I'm sick and tired of these uh, internet professionals who, uh, who honestly, you could argue that you could lump myself into one of them, but uh, either way, take it, take it or leave it. But uh, basically, so many people have begun to uh, recommend just straight up powerlifting programs catering to the big movements indefinitely for a competitive powerlifter or competitive strength athlete over a long period of time. Just do, do squat, bench, deadlift, like three times a week, all of it three times a week, three days a week or four days a week, and do that for the rest of your life, and you'll get the best gains ever. But I have a serious issue with that. Um, everyone, or the, uh, and this video is done on the fly, so if I stutter, deal with it, because that's how I roll on this channel. Um, basically, everyone who uh, preaches that form of training and I'm one of them. I, I do, but not indefinitely. They always go back to the, uh, the aspect of neuromuscular or neural adaptation, which is basically, in layman's terms, it's you do a movement such as the squat, the bench, or the deadlift. You do it very frequently in order to learn how to do it efficiently. And in doing so, you're not actually gaining muscle or considerable muscle but you're making considerable strength gains just due to the fact that you're doing the movement so frequently and you're becoming better at doing it frequently. Hence why so many people experience such rapid um, strength gains, or not even strength gains, but rapid familiar familiarization with the movements once they start running something like Shiko. I went through the same thing uh, about a year, uh, a year ago when I ran, I began doing Shiko. I started Shiko with like a 475 max squat, like a, I, I don't even know, like a 290 bench, a 540 deadlift or something, and that got me up to a, a 1,500 pound gym total, at like 550, three, uh, four, uh, 325, 335, something around there, uh, and like a 600 deadlift. It's, it's just you rapidly increase strength because you actually learn how to use your body in an efficient manner throughout those movements. But so many of these online strength coaches are dissing and just shutting, like completely disregarding one time per week frequency or like 1.5 time per week frequency programs such as 531, uh, Cones method, uh, the Cube method, or anything like that. But what I'm here to say is you can't do that. That's not how science works. That's not how strength training works. That's not how coaching works. And these freaking idiots that, that automatically think that they're like, that they understand every principle of strength training just because they've read some theoretical books or, uh, or not theoretical books, but read some uh, theories or practices or research studies, even though, even though they're perfectly, perfectly conducted peer-reviewed research studies, I'm not dissing them, but there are no absolutes. That's the problem with strength training. That's the problem with life in general. There is no absolute rule other than the single rule that you have a birthday and you have a day that you will die. Everyone does. That's the only concrete rule, absolute rule in this world. And that like what I what I would argue is that many athletes and, and I would go back to the point of neuromuscular adaptation. Yes, that is a phenomenon that the human body goes through and you can experience it at whether you're a uh, a complete novice or an intermediate or an elite athlete who's just maybe had broken movement patterns and just gotten by on just natural natural genetic strength you know but the problem with using that neuromuscular adaptation and justify or using it to justify programs where all you're doing is squatting and benching and deadlifting and maybe a couple accessory movements to build upon them the problem with using that as like the as the uh, 
the, the reason why you need to do that is who defines how quickly neuromuscular adaptation occurs. One individual may, when they're beginning, when they start lifting, I've seen this happen. Some people go through the stages of development where it, per, it firstly registers in their like very short-term memory where it's just one in, in one ear, out the other ear, and then it registers in their short-term memory, they can start to recall it, they're still struggling, they're still like trying to get the movement down, let's say with the barbell deadlift, and they need a coach there, they need someone giving them cues, or they need to be actively researching it, filming their own form, and watching it, and then it transitions into their long-term memory where it's just, it's clicking, they understand how to do it. But this does not happen in a definite amount of time for any individual. If you are a beginner, yes, you should be doing the main compound lifts very, very frequently. But that's a reason why beginners excel in programs such as 531 with the boring but big accessory movements. If you, do, if you do a squat workout where you work up to a max set of squats and your movement pattern is broken, well guess what, after that top set, it's not, not anywhere near your one rep max, not anywhere near like super fatiguing, like I'm going to die movement, or it shouldn't be if you follow the program, you knock it down and do five sets of 10. If you have those broken movement patterns or if you have a coach with you to look at your squat form and you're doing five sets of 10, that can easily be corrected. You can learn how to do the movement correctly. That's what it's for. And then you can uh, use this adaptation process to get the movement down, become more efficient at the movement. I've seen athletes come in to the gym and almost instantaneously have fantastic form. They just, they, it clicks with them. And then they can repeat that process and recall what they need to do to get into those positions instantly. And that's just, I don't know whether that's just something in their genetics, something in their brain, something how they were raised, something how they were listened, but that's what happens with some people. And these people who pick up that efficient form instantly, they're the ones who can go on to excel with one time per week frequency. That look at me, I, I squat and deadlift once per week, but because I have such a hard time staying in the proper movement patterns for bench. I bench three to four times a week, three right now because I'm in meat prep. But if I weren't to do that, I would essentially forget how to do the movement. That's why there are no absolutes, there are no coveralls, and there are, you should not be preaching this one size fits all. You should be doing this amount of frequency, this many times per week in order to achieve neuromuscular adaptation. That's not how it works. Neuromuscular adaptation does not occur over a definite period of time. It can occur in the period of one session or it can occur over the period of six months. I'm still learning how to bench. And if there, and it's, it's incredibly difficult for an athlete once they're once they identify what movement they struggle with, it's very hard for them to perfect that movement. That's why certain people may benefit from higher frequency training and other people can benefit from just doing a squat day, a bench day, a deadlift day, and an overhead press day. And then, even if they were to do something like that, guess what? If you're a smart coach, if you're a smart athlete, you could tack on a, a, uh, a compound movement that complements the other compound after the first compound. So like on squat day, oh my goodness, you could do sumo deadlifts after that for volume in order to get a movement pattern down. After your conventional deadlift day, oh my gosh, you could throw in front squats. Holy crap, there are no absolutes. Stop preaching, stop just being dogmatic learn how to be a coach, learn how to use different methods, and stop being closed-minded for the love of God. This is Frank the Sullivan Way. See you later.